activities is very important for the aerospace industry as a whole. I would say because it inspires students to pursue the field of aerospace in college and even in their careers. So my program allows students to immerse into a simulated clean room type environment and interact with 3D models of a cube satellite and complete goal-oriented hands-on activities. I was able to create this program due to my first-hand working knowledge of 1U Cube Satellites. I'm a member of the Wolfpack CubeSat development team, which consists of middle and high school students and college students, led by Kevin Simmons. Um, we have launched two Cube Satellites to space through NASA's CubeSat launch initiative. Our first Cube Satellite, WiSat one was launched in 2018, and then our most recent Cube Satellite, CapSat one was accepted by NASA and launched last year. CapSat one had the mission to test the viability of capacitors as a replacement for lithium ion batteries in spaceflight. We have an upcoming mission, WolfSat one which was recently been accepted by Firefly Aerospace as part of their Dream 2.0 program. And WolfSat one is a biological research mission to find information to further human presence in spaceflight. And then another satellite that we are also launching later this year will be FlipSat one So I work as a lead CAD technician on both the CapSat1 and the WolfSat1 mission, and I was able to use my skills, but also like the 3D CAD models and assets that I designed in those missions to help me create this virtual reality learning program. So that, so before I go into more information about my program now, I can now share more of the purpose behind it. Um, technical aerospace education that's hands-on at an early age has been found to be very important to prepare students who want to move on to more complicated STEM classes later in college. Um, it was found that students who originally showed interest in a STEM field at class ended up dropping out of that field due to lack of prior STEM activities. So a matter of fact, it was found that 45% of college freshmen who entered college in a STEM major lacked the prior fundamentals to successfully complete the class. So as a result, many of the students ended up switching to different majors. They ended up performing poorly in the class, and even some of them ended up dropping out of college without a degree at all. Another study found that the United States students have actually been lacking in student achievements over the past decade. And when the United States was ranked with 37 other countries, we ranked seventh in science and 25th in mathematics. So that is why in order to prepare students for more complicated classes in college, they must be exposed to hands-on aerospace learning from an early age so they can really learn those fundamentals properly. Many studies have shown that through learning STEM through hands-on activities like intelligent manipulation of objects is much more effective than learning through reading books or listening to lectures. So um, it's hands-on learning is also very important or even more important I would say in the field of aerospace as it can help and like, ignite students' interest in a technical field they are not particularly familiar with. It also allows them to develop like a base knowledge of this field, so when they go into college, they can take a deep dive into more specific projects. So for example, CUBE satellites are becoming an increasingly popular project in college, but with many students who are not, um, had, did not have path to expo exposure to CUBE satellites, um, they may find it difficult to learn the material in time or may not be selected for such projects. So, the, but the problem is with all this is that hands-on is hands-on activities at an early age, such as middle school, is not widely available either due to factors such as cost or lack of qualified technology or teachers. Virtual reality can be implemented as a solution, as it can help simulate a hands-on activity all in a simulated virtual environment. So for example, students can immerse into a simulated clean room environment and they can interact with 3D models such as a cube satellite. And then studies have shown that virtual reality can also provide a deeper understanding of a topic through role playing features, all leading to an enhanced educational result. So using my experience working on CUBE satellites, I designed an educational aerospace related virtual reality learning program in Unreal Engine. Unreal Engine is an advanced real-time 3D creation tool for immersive experiences, and many students know the Unreal Engine through the creation of the popular game Fortnite, so there's a pop, there's already like an underlying, and I'm also very familiar with the unique coding language in the program. 
So using a blueprint coding methodology, I created, a, I created an experience where students can wear an Oculus virtual reality headset and then can immerse into a simulated clean room environment. And then using the virtual handles, they can interact with 3D models and complete hands-on activities all pertaining to a set. All right, so before students can um, before students can complete like the hands-on goal-oriented activities, they can first interact with a 3D model of a 1U CubeSat light. On the left, you can see a 3D model of a CubeSat designed in Fusion 360. And then on the right, you can see that imported into the virtual clean room environment. So here's a short video that shows what it's like logging into the experience. So you can see the students can move around. They can look around the clean room. And then this is an empty 1U CubeSat chassis that they can pick up. It's something wrong with the video, but it's not normally this shaky in the experience. All right, so for the first hands-on activity, students can complete a simulated electrical payload activity, which is based off of our most recent Cube Satellite CapSat 1. When working on CapSat 1, um, we had to have extensive, extensive knowledge of circuitful engineering. So, they are, so in this program, they're gonna be completing a simple circuit. In CapSat 1, we used a, pay, a PCB board as an area to mount and control the capacitors and we use an Arduino Uno as the microcontroller to code and record the data. So in this activity, students will be able to interact with the Arduino Uno, which is a microcontroller, a breadboard, which will serve and act as the PCB board, and an LED light, which will act as the capacitors, and they will um, complete a circuit of turning on the LED light. So for more clarification, students would have to interact with the 3D model of the Arduino Uno by connecting jumper wires from various pins to the breadboard, and then they would need to pick up a resistor and transfer the electricity from one side of the breadboard to another. And if you do any of the steps wrong, like connect a wrong pin or do not put the wire in the right position on the breadboard, then the LED light will not turn on and then you will know you did something wrong. And then here's a short video demonstrating this activity. So you can see the LED light, you can see the resistor, and then you can pick, you can drag the wires from the Arduino to the breadboard, and that would be the ground pin, and then you need to connect the 5 volt pin to the breadboard. And you can notice the LED light has not been turned on yet, so that's when you need to pick up the resistor. It's a little finicky here. And then you can place that or drop it in place in this, this mirror. And then you can see the LED light turned on, knowing that you completed the activity correctly. So for a different type of learning experience, students can now move on to the next table and work on a biological payload mission, replicating our WolfSat 1. Um, so for this, you can see the three, 3D model of WolfSat 1's payload in the, on the left. And then you can see that imported into the virtual reality um, on the right. Um, for this, well, Sat one we were testing a Adenosicensis, a bacteria's ability to digest PET plastic in a microgravity environment. And then as you can see on the images, we used a MP6 micro pump as the primary way of circ circulating nutrients from one area to another. So just like a micro pump is essential for any bacterial mission such as Wolf Cell 1 that requires moving nutrients from one area to another, um, an activity that students can engage in for the biological payload mission would be learning about a micro pump and connecting tubing from a microfluids bag through the micro pump into a petri dish to move nutrients from one area to another. So similarly to the electrical payload activity, they would connect wires, but in this case it would be plastic tubing from the micro pump um, to the microfluids bag, and then they could control the substance um, by using a static mesh, in this case it would be a sphere ball, and then when it's overlapped, the nutrients will be moved from the, from the microfluids bag through the micro pump, and then you would connect the plastic tubing from the micro pump to the Petri dish, and then once that's connected, you will see the nutrients appear in the Petri dish. So we can see a short view of that now. You can see the payload, and then you can see Three components. You can see they can move the plastic tubing however far they like, however they need to make sure it is in the correct area. And look 
got that place you can see it. It's moving. And then when they connect the tubing there, then you can see the water will arise in the Petri dish. So you can see they move substances from one area to another. So, yeah. So as you can see, um, this program is still in the proof of concept stage, um, but it is easy to scale and expand upon the number of user projects. And then of course the graphics can always be improved with time. In the future, some user projects could be added like rotating servo motors, experimenting with LED screens, and measuring distances of objects with an ultrasonic sensor, or any other related activities that could be helpful to the field of STEM or aerospace. Um, educational virtual reality labs do already exist in a very high scientific um, and engineering level fields. However, when it comes to lower levels of education, especially in the field of aerospace, the application there is not as widely available. So with my program, the experience provided in this educational virtual reality program allows students to learn about the field of aerospace in a fun and interactive way for younger students and complete experiments there. Um, and something else that I would like to add in this program in the future is a multi-user collaborative feature. So students can log into the same shared virtual reality environment and they can split into teams to work on different projects or they can all work together on one project all in like the same virtual reality room. Um, overall, I want this program to serve as an early career exploration tool for younger students who are interested in learning about aerospace in a fun and interactive way. Thank you. Thank you.